the mammy. You tell me who you want done, and I'll do the hell out of it. The Jezebel. Shut it up! You are such a big baby. And the Sapphire. Submissive, sexy, sassy. Three stereotypes of black women that return to our screens over and over again. The Mammy is probably the most familiar to people. It's usually a maid, heavy, taking care of the family. You is kind, you is smart, you is important. She is asexual, she doesn't have really a life of her own. She's really only there to support the family. And probably one of the most famous examples is Mammy from Gone with the Wind. Just hold on and suck it. Somebody who is always seeking out to put aside her own desires, her own needs for white families, white men, white women, white children. Meet Sugar Hill, sexiest, deadliest chicken town. <laughs> The second stereotype is the Jezebel, and that's someone who is generally oversexed. Is mysterious. Her only power is in her body and in the influence she has over men. Unattainable. And then finally, the Sapphire character, I think that's seen in TV more often than anything else. Get some Kleenex, wipe your nose, cause it ain't that damn sad. The Sapphire is usually sharp tongue, manipulative woman who emasculates her husband. <laughs> There was actually a character called Sapphire Stevens on um, the Amazon Andy show. And I guess you think you could cook, clean, and get along just fine all by yourself. I do. The representation of the angry black woman. And that's kind of metamorphosized to today, where we just have sassy, angry black woman who doesn't take anything from anybody. Caricatures of black women have been around in Western culture for centuries. They're rooted in the transatlantic slave trade when stereotypes were used to commodify black bodies and justify slavery. These characters were popularized in what Americans called minstrel shows, comedic performances in which white actors in blackface lampoon black people just to entertain other whites. By the early 1900s, Minstrel shows were fading in popularity, but the stereotypes endured. They made the jump to film, then electronic media, and they have survived to this day. Throughout history, more often than not, black women are depicted in reductive ways that denies the different experiences and emotions that are a part of their life. Aunt Jemima. Perfect pancakes in 10 shakes. Depictions of black women in the media throughout time have been used to put forward ultimately oppressive ideologies. Generalizations are useful, I constantly say this, but they're also shortcuts. And it feeds into our own racist imagination. And we miss the realities, the full depth of black women's stories because you are essentializing black people. You're saying there is no complexity beyond this. Well, it's gonna be no surprise that the audience and the creators alike are going to constantly think that we have represented black women in the way they are, when really what they've represented is just the same racist caricature over and over again. Stereotypes like the Mammy, Jezebel, and Sapphire have, however, evolved over time, reinvented in characters like the welfare queen and the sassy black friend. Oh, you looking for a sassy black friend? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, you got one now, girlfriend. In the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests, there has been renewed pushback against this kind of racist imagery. Look, tin of Red Bull, yeah, pour half away, pull the rest up with vodka, that is me, sorted. These nails are digging in tonight. Ah. I have ascribed to play the part of the, the welfare queen, and my mum is playing the mammy, and um, it's two, like, stereotypes together um, with no, like, deep interrogation as to why. It's £10 to get in and drinks cost a fortune. We just like pop up as like best friends of like our white leads. I remember being on set and almost being asked to give us more sass, give us more attitude. I watched this back and um, 
I absolutely was complicit in the propaganda of the anti-blackness. I advocated anti-black like rhetoric for the sake of capitalism and for the sake of a credit. Cyrus. For black actors, caricatures are no longer the only parts out there. TV shows like Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder and Insecure feature layered black women in their leading roles. But such complex, multi-dimensional characters are the exception, while stereotypes, or token black roles, remain the rule. A fact that is, at least partly, explained by a lack of diversity behind the camera, at the writing desk and in the director's chair. One of the problems is that there just really aren't a lot of people of color who are making decisions, who are writing, who are producing, right? It's like, no job. No man. All of this sounds bad, but it's actually really good. It's good vibes only. When you think about a show like Insecure on HBO, Issa Rae does that because she is a black woman. She has black writers, black producers, and so she makes it her business to make sure that the full story is told, the complex parts, that's reality. And we just don't see a lot of that on TV or in film. The fact that the majority of casting directors are white and predominantly male absolutely adds to the um, further sort of marginalization of black bodies and absolutely contributes to the misrepresentation of who we are and our stories. What the hell is Bob Marley salted cod? Give me vegetables, please. <laughs> they just call it a different name, man. No, I'm not eating Jamaican food made by English people. And so I think we're turning to the internet because the internet allows us to um, commune, mobilize, stabilize, um, educate, decolonize, um, and free ourselves from the sort of the, the dominance that is like the white, the white culture. The internet has offered black artists a space to tell their own stories, and they have proven successful. Web series like Aki and Saltfish and Issa Rae's Awkward Black Girl amassed large followings online, and both shows were eventually picked up by big broadcasters. But it's taken a lot of clicks and likes for TV executives to acknowledge that black women's stories, the good, the bad, the ugly, are worthy of their screen time. A lot of major networks consider it a risk to tell black stories because they're not always sure that the mainstream will receive them well. Unfortunately, black creators are in a position of having to prove over and over again that our stories are worth telling. Stop trying to engulf my nose with your... Content created by black women who are incredibly talented but who've often been overlooked by industry is engaging, it's interesting, it's dynamic. And also because it typically doesn't conform to the conventions of industry that have been very narrow and prescriptive, it's more exciting in many ways than what is offered in the mainstream. The white world, if you will, tells its stories like they are global stories. Whereas when black people tell their stories, those stories are only stories about those people. I think that that is something that people really need to question. Because the way white stories are told, the rest of us are supposed to find our humanity in those stories. Why can't white people find their humanity in our stories as well? 